Okay, so as you all know previously, I bought the Winspace Hyper Wheel 65mm rim brake version. So, uh, okay, before the whole thing starts and my entire impressions of these wheels, I would like to say like, I've not paid, they didn't pay me, I paid the thing fully by myself. Uh, and some details about me is that I weigh, okay, I weigh 80kg, so this may or may not apply to you. Because of the entire like, your 65mm pushed me away during crosswinds and this entire issue. And I realized that weight is a very important factor in that. Now, previously I was riding the Fulcrum 900 racing wheels, which was given, and not given, which was like stuck on the Kenyan Ultimate uh, bike that I ordered it last year. So, it's, uh, it's an aluminum wheel that weighs 1,900 grams. And the rim brake, eh, no wait. And the hyper wheel, 65mm, weighs about 1,500. So that's about 400 gram difference. Now that's a lot, considering that the rim depth is like so much different. Okay, so one thing I forgot to mention is that um, there is this one particular thing on the about the design of the wind space hyper wheels that I was a bit disappointed with. So I thought that every single one of their wheels had this like butterfly weaving design pattern that wind space like boasting about but when i went to the shop and a guy told me that only the 38 mm and 50 mm has it which is the one uh which is the one on the left and the hyper 65 does not have it which is the one on the right lah, which is the hyper 65 so uh it was it had something to do with the construction and the entire integrity of the wheel that was not able to use the butterfly weaving pattern on the 65mm wheels. I think the fulcrum is like 30, 30 mm, eh? 28 or 30 mm rim depth, the wheel. So the entire process is actually quite simple. I just have to go to the shop and buy it. There's a distributor in Singapore. I'll, I'll link the shop below. Lah. And the entire, okay, the problem was that, the problem that I found was a bit sketchy. Okay, not sketchy. There was a that some people might be affected by is that the guy opens the box when you say you want to look at the wheels so he opens an entire new packaging just for you so he assumes that you're gonna buy the he assumes that you're gonna buy the wheel already some people might like be like hey why you open the box when i never say i'm going to buy or i never confirm to buy or something like that so it's really like up to you lah if you're willing if you are fussy and like this really affects you then don't buy it or just buy online and then ship it over from China. Now the box came with everything I needed. The box came with the extender valve, tubeless valves, quick release skewers, carbon brake pads, everything. The box was really really nicely packaged. The wheels itself were wrapped like individually on its own and it has an insertion within the box so the wheel doesn't move around during like transport and everything. Really nice design really nice packaging and there were no damages to the wheels at all which was a really good thing lah from in space i feel especially since it's been shipped from china like xiamen all the way to singapore which is quite far okay now during installation during installation there was a bit of an issue firstly it was from kenyan kenyan side the screws on the brake pads that were like the screws that were on the brake calipers were rounded off very easily so anybody installing that has to be careful i heard that other it's just this particular screw and this particular component on every bike that rounds off very easily so anyone installing new brake pads should just be careful of this uh. the rims were like thick like it was almost it was so thick that i had to like open up the brake calipers and usually it's closed, right? But I had to open out the brake calipers, and even when I open it, there was still a very, like, very, very small space left for the brake pads to close. Don't know whether it's a good thing or not, lah. It's easier for me to brake, right? But yeah, it was a problem for me to put in the wheels and take out, especially when inserting in the tires. I had to like push it in a bit before it could go in and pass through the brake pads. Now, another thing was that the valve extender had a... I, my bike pump was not like fully 
able to fit in the valve extender. I don't know whether it's the valve extender problem or my bike pump issue. But when I put in the bike pump, like when I try to push it into the valve extender, there'll be some air leakage or sometimes the the what's that called? The valve will not be in the pump fully. So then I could not be I was not able to pump the tires up. But like after pushing it in, after trying a bit, like moving here and there. I was able to get the bike pumped up. La. So that was also good. One issue I had was that, okay, maybe because I didn't read the instruction manual and I don't remember whether there's an instruction manual in the box or not. But a lot of these things, um, a lot of the installation can be found on like YouTube or like on a simple Google search. But they do not provide you with the tools that you need. So they do not provide the chain whip. They do not provide the lock ring screw. They do not provide anything. So. If you don't have any of this, you gotta go to the shop and ask them to fix for you. Uh. Okay, so I've ridden about a thousand, eh, not a thousand, a hundred kilometers with these wheels. I've been onto some climbs. Uh, I've climbed up like Mount Faber a few times, and I don't find them any different in in terms of like crosswinds or anything compared to my aluminium wheels. Okay, maybe the first time I rode it, I had, it took some time to get used to the wheels because it was really like a bit shaky when the wind blew. But after a while, it was fine. Everything was fine. I got used to it. Um, uh, crosswinds weren't a problem. Climbing is okay. Climbing feels exactly like my old wheels, and even I, I even got a, like a new PR on paper. Not very fast, but it was it shaved off like ten seconds of my previous time. I got no power meter, so I don't know whether like the power was the, s I don't know whether the power was the same or not, but yeah, I mean, feels good, feels nice, looks nice. I'll go faster. I'm happy. I'm satisfied. So, yeah, I think that's really like the major issue with the entire wheels. I don't have any problems with it for now. Hundred km, maybe if I were to do a thousand km. 10,000 km, then I will probably see a bigger difference. Disclaimer, I have not used MV, I have not used Zip, I have not used any of the high-end wheels, so I have nothing to compare to. I'm only comparing to like, I'm only comparing to my aluminum wheels, and it's like, a big difference lah, I feel. But, one thing is that, I'm not a racer, I'm just a normal cyclist in, on the road. I don't feel the stiffness, I don't feel the flex, I don't feel... A lot of people say like, oh, carbon wheels will absorb vibration. I can't tell the difference. Maybe a bit, but it's not like once I put in, I feel like I'm riding on marshmallows or something. I really don't see that there's a very big difference. It just looked nice. It felt nice. And I have an obsession for thick wheels, so it looks good. I feel that thick wheels look good on road bikes. So yeah, if you are interested to get a wind space wheels, just go and get it because it's a good value for money i've asked a lot of people on the road as well who are using wind space wheels wind space frames whether or not like the bike is good or whether or not the thing is worth it and every single one of them has said yes i know that there was a guy on youtube who was saying like his uh, wind space wheels had a lot of issues and the good thing was that even wind space went to comment on his video and like asked about it and try to get try to help him with the customer support so i feel that's a really really good part on lean space end and it just shows that if you have any warranty issues if you have any like customer service issues support issues that you need to fix with the wheel you can get back to them and if you were to buy in singapore even though it's not from china you get a two-year warranty from the seller from the seller in singapore yeah, so if you are still thinking whether to get the wheels or not, get it. If you are still thinking like, okay, it's a bit expensive. Another thing I can recommend is Elite Wheels. I've heard they are decent. I've never ridden them, but for the price, six seven hundred dollars And you can get some of them from Carousel as well. So $600, I think it's, it's quite a work, like it's quite a good amount of money to pay la, for carbon wheels. And especially if let's say you are building a project bike or like like me I'm planning to build okay not a planning but I want to build a fully full bike 
made from China parts. I think that's risky, but whatever. That is when I will buy the elite wheels to try, but not yet, not so soon. So yeah, I have nothing bad to say about the wheels. Maybe in the future, I will have something bad to say, but so far everything is good. Go for it. That's all I can say, just go for it.